All right, welcome back to our video today on Monday, August the 10th. I'm glad you're uh, tuning in today, and I hope you have enjoyed this tournament uh, so far. And today I'm excited because we have a very interesting video <clears throat> for today. Um, before we get into that, I would like to show you the results of Friday's video. Folks, we are at the final, uh, at the final uh, little area of round one. And so we're here Friday, we saw Ezra and Adam, the first man, Adam. And folks, I'm gonna tell you that it was not even close at all. The results of that video was 100% Ezra, 0% Adam. So Ezra, I'll put a check by him. He has advanced to the second round. And in the second round, he will be paired up with the winner of today's video, Joshua or Caleb. And then, of course, you can see uh, Tuesday's video and Wednesday's. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, if you know your Bible, then you know why this is so interesting. We have Joshua and Caleb. These two men are connected. I'm sure they were best friends. And it is uh, very amazing that they are paired up in this tournament together. So we're going to go ahead and start with Joshua. Now, uh, I've always liked the story of Joshua. Um, you will find that there is a book, uh, the sixth book of the Bible is called the book of Joshua, okay? But I want to start off before that with him and tell you where did he come from? Well, folks, if you, if you uh, read the Bible, you'll know that Joshua was the helper, or you could say the assistant to Moses, if you know your Bible, you'll know that the second book of the Bible is Exodus, and Moses was the leader of the Jewish people leaving Egypt, going towards the Promised Land. And you'll know that, that Joshua was Moses' main helper, his, uh, his assistant. And we see him at times, for example, if you know the story of Mount Sinai, Moses climbed up Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments from God. Joshua was with him, and Joshua went a part, partly up, partly up the mountain with Moses until he, until he was told to stop. So I'm going to start off with that, that he, I'm just going to, I'm just going to call it that he was Moses' assistant. Okay. Now, folks, I hope you can see the marker pretty well. This is a brand new marker, however, it's fine tip. So I'll do my best to make it as dark as possible. But uh, I wrote up here, he was Moses' assistant. Now, folks, what makes that such a great thing is men like Joshua, if you know your Bible, we're going to talk about it in a moment, he became a great leader. But before you can just step into a leadership position, you have to know how to work your way up. And the best way to do that is to, is to learn from the elders, is to learn from those that have done it before. I know for myself that I am so thankful for nine years of being an assistant pastor to my pastor, and I learned so much from him. And anyway, so Joshua was ready when the day came for him to be a leader because he was Moses' shadow. Wherever Moses went, Joshua was right there, including Mount Sinai. Now, the second thing I want to tell you is Joshua was a, a, a soldier. Joshua was, um, you could call it that he was a military man. Um, 
such, uh, such as was many people in the Old Testament. Even King David, you probably know, was basically a general on the battlefield for Israel. Well, Joshua was the same. Folks, there are many battles that Joshua won for the Israel people as the leader. Um, there is a, a famous story as soon as the Jews left Egypt in the book of Exodus, uh, Moses selected Joshua to lead the Jews in the battle against uh, one of the enemy groups known as the Amalekites. This was the first battle for the Jewish people after they left Egypt, and Joshua was the leader, the captain, the general, and he, uh, just to let you know, they won that battle. So he was, uh, let's see, I'm just going to word it as a leader in battle for Israel. Okay, many of you may know, if you've been around the Bible long enough, you probably know the story of the Battle of Jericho. And uh, it's a very famous story where they marched around the city for seven days and blew the trumpets. Uh, incredible story. Joshua was the leader of that as well. Now, the third thing, and this is where Joshua becomes famous. Moses led the people to the promised land. They were almost there. But Moses said, okay, I'm going to pick out 12 men, one from every tribe of Israel, and I'm going to send you into the promised land to spy the land. I want you, he said, I want you to report back to me uh, what does it look like over there. Uh, where are the closest bodies of water? How many people are there? Remember, there were enemies there that they were going to have to tend to. Well, 12 men went. 10 of them came back to Moses after about a month. They came back and they said, we can't do this. It's not a battle that we can win. Which, folks, the, the thing is, God had promised that it was going to happen. But ten of them didn't believe. Two of them did. Two of the twelve spies. And you're looking at both of them right here. These are both famous men. They came back and they said, uh, they said that yes, we can do this. We can take the, the land, the promised land. It is a wonderful place. And folks, uh, Joshua, I, I don't have time to tell you the whole story, but Moses made a mistake as the leader of Israel. So God told Moses, you can't enter the promised land, but I'm going to let you get right up to it, and I'm going to let you look at it from the top of a mountain. But folks, Joshua, because of who he was, he became the new leader for the Israel people. He led them into the promised land. So I'm going to say that he was one uh, let's see he was one of the two spies that believed. Okay? And as I just said, folks, I'm giving you a little spoiler alert. Caleb is the other one. But he became the leader of the Jewish people. And I'm just going to go ahead and write that up here next. He led Israel into the promised land. Okay. He led Israel into the promised land. One last little thing I want to tell you about him. There's so much more to his story, but there was a battle in the book of Joshua chapter 10. 
Even as the leader of Israel, he still was their leader in battle. And there is a battle in Joshua chapter 10 where Joshua asked God, would he stop the sun from going down? In other words, he said, Lord, will you just stop time today so we can defeat the enemy before sunset? And folks, the Bible says that is the only time that God... Um, uh, I'm trying to find the right word, that God listened to a man and he did what the man had asked and God stopped time that day and they won the battle. That's in Joshua chapter 10. So folks, Joshua has an incredible story. Now I would like to move to the story of Caleb, okay? I ask you as always to please hear both men's story before you make your decision which one inspires you more so we're going to look at caleb now now i'm going to start with caleb by telling you that as i said there were 12 tribes of israel okay kind of like there's 50 states in america well there was 12 tribes of israel and caleb is from the tribe of judah now, if that sounds familiar to you, that's the tribe Jesus was from as well, the tribe of Judah. Now, we're told in the book of Numbers that Caleb was the leader of the tribe of Judah at that time. In his life, he was the leader of the entire tribe. So I'm going to write up here, first of all, I'm going to write that he was the head of the tribe of Judah. Okay? Head of the tribe of Judah. So that was a very important position. Keep in mind there were many, many thousand people in that tribe. Okay. Now, um, let's see. We're told, uh, this is going to sound familiar, folks. We're told that Caleb was one of the two spies. Remember, there were 12 of them. Ten of them said, we can't do it. Even though God said we can have this land, it's too much. We can't overcome the enemy over there. But Joshua and Caleb were the two that said, yes, we can. God is giving us this land. Now, we're told in the book of Numbers chapter 13 that when the 12 spies were giving their report and one after one after one kept saying, we can't do it, we can't do it, Caleb, we're told, if you read Numbers 13 verse 30, Caleb, not Joshua in this particular story, Caleb it says he stilled the people. That means uh, he probably raised his hands and said, all right, everyone, let's listen. And he told about what God was doing for them. So Joshua, excuse me, Caleb, I'm going to also write that he was one of the spies that believed. Okay. Now, please don't get the wrong idea when I say the word spy. Please don't think that made him a bad man or something. All that word means is he was sent by Moses and Joshua as well was sent to look at the promised land and come back and report what it looked like. Okay. Now, the third thing I'd like to say is that when they entered the promised land, as I said, folks, Moses couldn't enter in. He had made a mistake, and we'll talk about that another day. But God also said that none of the older generation was going to be able to enter in. That's why they were in the wilderness for 40 years. In that wilderness, 
all the elder generation died, and the younger generation was the one God allowed to enter in. But only two from the elder generation did God let enter in. And you're looking at them right here, Joshua and Caleb. As you know, folks, Joshua did become the leader, not Caleb. But I want you to know Caleb had a very respected um, uh, situation, I guess you would say. Can you just imagine with me that as they entered the land, they had to defeat the enemies, divide out the land between the 12 tribes. Caleb, remember, him and Joshua are the only two elders now. He would have been respected and a voice that you would go to for decisions. I'm sure Joshua lent a lot on Caleb to, for advice and things like that. So I'm going to say that he was, uh, he was uh, respected. I'm just going to say he had a respected position in Israel. Okay? A respected position in Israel. Remember, folks, he was already the head of the tribe of Judah, but now he is one of the only two elder people in the whole country. He would have had a very respected position. And the last thing I would like to say is this, that when when they entered the promised land and they had to defeat the enemies because God was giving them the land, they divided the land between the 12 tribes. Caleb, because of his special position, him and Joshua, and then Joshua become the leader, Caleb asked for a special portion of land. He wanted a portion of land that, of course, was in the area of his tribe of Judah, but it had a special mountain area. He asked, being the elder of the country, could he have this certain portion of land with this mountain in their tribe's territory? And Joshua, being the leader, gave him and his family that portion of land. So I'm going to say that he was given a special portion of land. Okay. A special portion of land was given to him. So folks, I've told you today the story of Joshua and Caleb. And uh, I, I've skipped a lot, but this gives you enough information that now I ask you to please consider both men. Think about their stories. Prayerfully consider which one of the two inspires you more than, than the other. So please think about it. Please cast your votes. And remember, tomorrow we will have Jeremiah and Ezekiel. That will be exciting. Two of the prophets. And then Wednesday, the last video of the first round. Abraham and King Asa. So please tune in in our next couple days. Anyway, so thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great day, and God bless you.